What's going on, guys? Welcome into End on a Make. Uh, my name is Dustin, and tonight I just wanted to spend a little bit of time and talk about the Washington Wizards. Uh, they just knocked off the Lakers in overtime, uh, coming back from 17 down for their fifth straight win, and it seems like in just a couple short weeks, their entire season has turned around. It seems like they're kind of starting to turn a corner and figure things out. Now, when the season started, there was a lot of hype around them. They shipped out John Wall. No one knew what he was going to look like. You brought in Russell Westbrook instead. People were thinking, you know, he's going to resemble the same Russell Westbrook he's been. It's going to fit better with Beal. He's going to be able to, you know, open up the offense, kind of do what he's known for. And it just wasn't that. It just was not a good start to the season for them. They lose Thomas Bryant to an ACL tear really early on. Westbrook's in and out of the lineup with various injuries. Uh, Denny Advia, they're top 10 pick just was not playing too well they signed davis bertons to an 82 million dollar extension in the offseason and he just was not cutting it either and to top it all off you had these rumors that bradley beal was unhappy like we had games that ended with him sitting on the bench looking miserable looking like he was ready to just just quit right there just walk out and never come back and so you had all these rumors that he was the next big star that was gonna go to the front office and be like hey I can't do it anymore. You got to get me out of here. And the crazy thing is, two, three weeks ago, if he had done that, I'm not too sure the Wizards fans wouldn't have been like, hey, we understand. We hate to see you go, but but we get it. Go be great somewhere. And now you look, they have five straight wins. Uh, the teams they're beating aren't exactly pushovers either. So the five wins have come against the Celtics, the Rockets, the Clip, or not the Clippers, the Blazers, the Nuggets, and now the Lakers. So that's, that's pretty quality wins as far as, you know, Western Conference teams. Like, the Celtics are still having their issues, you know. Uh, that's a topic for an entirely different video. But I just wanted to talk a little bit about the Wizards and what I think it is that's turning around for them. So, first off, having Westbrook play at this level is absolutely key. Uh, the last five games now, he has been extremely aggressive getting to the rim he's been extremely efficient with the shots he's taking he's not taking those you know those heavily covered pull-up threes or those drive the lane and kind of step back and try to hit that mid-range shot like he is attacking the rim and that kind of makes sense given that earlier in the year he talked about not feeling completely healthy uh denny advia who they they couldn't have been happy with early on because you know you take him in the top 10 and he just looked lost to start the year. He did not look like he understood what was happening. Things were going by super quick. Wasn't shooting well. And since kind of, I guess, I guess settling down a little bit into his role and being utilized a little bit more to his strengths like he was over in Israel, uh, where you have him kind of, you know, leading breaks. You have him creating shots for people. He's kind of a little bit more involved with the second unit now. Uh, that's not to say anything because, you know, he hit a couple key shots right before overtime and in overtime to help put the game away for the Wizards, including that, that corner three just before the end of uh, end of regulation, I believe. And, you know, he's really starting to come into his own. They're not asking him to do too much. And I think it might have been a, an issue early on where, you know, everyone was pressing. Everyone wanted to win. Everyone wanted to turn everything around. So you have that. You have Westbrook. You have Denny. Bradley Beal obviously playing as a deserved all-star starter. He's playing at an unbelievably high level right now. And if they keep this up and keep stringing together these impressive wins and these competitive showings, even if they're not winning, I think you could start to see him kind of build up his own little campaign for MVP. Uh, I don't think it would happen. I think it would take a, a huge <laughs> turnaround for them to get him really seriously into consideration, but I think you'll start to hear fans talk about it. I think, you know, playing at that level with that efficiency and that volume scoring and maintaining that efficiency is is impressive no matter what. And right now, I think they're within like a half a game or a game now of the 10 seed for the play-in tournament. And if they keep playing at this level, I don't think there's teams that are going to be lining up to play them best two out of three for them. They just need to go take two. Uh, but the the last big key to me for their their turnaround in recent weeks is this defense they've been playing. So I read a story a little bit uh, like probably two weeks ago that said 
Rui Hachimura came to them and said, I can guard one through five. Like he was telling the locker room, I can guard all five positions on the court. And they just kind of said, all right, go do it. And for a second year player to make a type of statement like that is, is crazy in itself. But that type of energy, the type of energy he's been bringing on the floor on both ends recently has been infectious. I mean, Westbrook has never been one to to phone it in on the court to half-ass it or anything. Like, he's always going to go as hard as he can both ends, even if that's detrimental to his health, really. But, you know, you lose Thomas Bryant, so you have some combination of Robin Lopez and Mo Wagner at the center. So having someone with that flexibility like Rui and getting the whole team to buy in and kind of kind of play together has has really been key. You see a lot more communication. There's a not there's not a whole lot of, you know, the the stupid mental mistakes that they were making earlier where it would be like, "Oh, he threw it behind him. Oh, he didn't call up a switch and his man got by him." Oh, the, you know, a bunch of just mistakes that like, you know, a young team figuring each other out are bound to make. And it's crazy because a lot of that blame fell directly on Scott Brooks. And when you have a team with talent like Beal and Westbrook and you underachieve like that, even with injuries, even with anything else, blame is always going to fall on the coach. So I heard a lot of people out there like just calling for his head, essentially just saying like, hey, Scott Brooks has to go. We got to We got to stop this and figure out what's what's happening. Trade Bradley get a haul back, rebuild, and figure out what exactly is happening from here. And instead, they stuck the course. Bradley Buell, I think, probably played a large part in that, too, by coming around and, you know, saying, I don't want to be traded. I want to stay here in Washington and keep doing what we're doing. Uh, and I think, you know, I think there's a lot of value in that. I think the star player coming out and saying, like, look, I know I'm in all these trade rumors. Stop it. I want to be here is a cool galvanizing thing for that team in that locker room. Like if he had come out and been like, yeah, I'm very unhappy here. Get me out of here immediately. Like, what does that do for everyone else? It just ruins their confidence. So to get a public vote of confidence like that and a reassurance from him, I'm sure kind of just lifts everybody anyways. But the team itself is just playing like a more cohesive unit. And whether they're winning or losing these games, obviously they've been winning lately, but whether they're winning or losing these games, they're competing a lot more. You don't see the negative body language from someone like Bill. You don't see him on the bench looking miserable. You see a lot of joy in this team, a lot of support, and that makes it a really fun team to watch. Even as a Laker fan, like there were tons of moments in tonight's game where I was like, I was like, oh, <laughs> they're gonna get this. They're gonna get this stop. They're gonna get this bucket. They're gonna get that. Like it was kind of inevitable. Like I was like, oh, Caruso's on Bradley Beal. Okay, we know how this is going. Um, and, you know, that's a fun team to watch. I don't know if they'll, you know, crack the top eight and make the playoffs not in the play-in, but I think they could be a really fun play-in tournament contender as far as, like, the second half of the season after this All-Star break comes up. Um, I That's just me, though. I don't know. If you think that they are going to peter out or if you think that this is just a mirage, let me know. Let me know what you think, uh, who you think could possibly be the team that beats them. And yeah, hit the comment section. Let me know. I'd love to hear it. And if you watch this whole thing, thank you. Probably be back soon. I'm going to try to do maybe a couple of these a week, kind of see how it goes.